The topic of difficulty has been tossed around a lot lately, and I wanted to throw my hat in there too. What ho chaps, I'm Magical Mike. First off, let's set the scene a little. This is Dark Souls. So, from the bonfire here, I have to get through these two silver knights, which I usually parry, and move on from. Simply learning the timing on the parries can be a small challenge in itself, and quite often I still screw this up and get myself killed rather stupidly. I can ignore the other knight, because he only wants to guard the chests. After that, there's sort of a longish run through the corridors here, which lead to an open room. I've got to quickly run through here and avoid both of the giants with halberds, and the archer shooting at me, and get into the boss fog. Every time I die, which will be a lot of times, I'll have to repeat that whole run kill both the knights, and avoid the stone giants. That's my punishment for death. It's not huge, but it's enough to waste a bit of time between boss attempts. So say hello to Ornstein and Smo. I feel I should follow that line up with a rhyme, but I don't really have time, even though I just... did. This couple of bosses is considered to be one of the hardest in the game, and I definitely agree with that sentiment. Just the simple fact that there's two of them makes this fight a lot more difficult. Ornstein, the smaller guy with the spear, has numerous fast attacks that you can dodge or block, while Smo has a bunch of really slow attacks that I could block, but they eat so much of my endurance that it's not worth it. Ornstein has a lot of just regular attacks that you can spot and react to easily. He also throws lightning spears at you from a distance and charges you rapidly. Smo will do similar things, but he doesn't have a ranged attack. Instead, his charge will hurt a great deal, and if you get hit by it, he'll smash you into the air with his hammer and do a lot more damage while also leaving you open to more attacks from both of them. Part of the problem with this fight is keeping track of both of the bosses, and because of this and a few other factors, you'll see how quickly I get killed. Most of my deaths are because I can't see Ornstein's attacks behind Fatty Smo, or because I'm bad at dodging the hammer charge. And after my death, remember that I have to run all the way back to the boss door. My strategy in this fight is vastly different to how I've been playing the game up until this point. Blocking is a powerful tool in this game, and the fight doesn't lend itself all that well to it. Smo's attacks drain all of my endurance and leave me vulnerable. They both like to jump around me and flank me, and Ornstein does lightning damage that I can't fully block anyway. So what I'm doing is two-handing my weapon so that every time I get a chance to deal damage, I can do as much as possible. The windows in which I can do that are very small, so I have to capitalise on those opportunities. The shield I have gives me a lot of extra endurance regen. Coupled with my ring choices and my removal of some heavy armour, all of this stuff allows me to dodge all of the attacks at a decent speed and retain safe distances when I need to. Also, if I do need to block at all, which generally I don't, my shield is very weak and probably can't handle it. In one of these clips I attempt to tank these bosses, but it doesn't work out. However, the shield does have a decent lightning resist, though most of the attacks when I need the resist later on can one or two shot me anyway. Speaking of later on, you'll notice that when I kill one of these guys, the other one heals up and gets a whole bunch of new attacks, which also means that you need to change your strategy a bit.
So we've seen a couple of strategies now, we've seen the dodging one and we've seen the full heavy armor blocking tactic. Both of these have merits. On one I can block more easily, and on the other I can keep better positioning. They also have detriments. Without movement, I'm forced to choose my engagement timings precisely, and without armor, I'm forced to not make any mistakes on dodging. The difficulty of these bosses comes from playing skillfully, and I'll talk about that in a bit. First though, let's go over a few more things that I could do to make this easier. I could go back to the bonfire and kindle it, which would give me more heals, and I eventually do do that. I could go human and summon some, summon some player help, or even summon an NPC to help me out. I could farm some levels. I could farm some upgraded gear, armor or weapons. I could go and learn some spells or get a ranged weapon. Or I could leave this area and do somewhere else. Or I could give up and quit, but that's pretty lame. So there's a lot of different things I can do to make my time easier, but for the challenge and so that I don't cheese it, I decide not to do these things. Like I said, the difficulty here is based off of skill and not due to instant kill mechanics, time limits, reliance on allies, or other arbitrary mechanics. It comes from learning the many attacks, keeping an eye on both of the bosses, refining a strategy, and pulling it off properly. Now this is a bit of a long shot, but try and bear with me. I want to compare this fight to Tequattle in Guild Wars 2. Recently, this is one of the bosses that people have deemed as difficult, and I want to talk about why it isn't. You've seen that these bosses have a lot of mechanics to them, and that's where the difficulty comes from in them. Tequattle only has a few mechanics. The people in front of him have to dodge a wave attack, and sometimes he fears you. That's pretty much it. The people on the turrets have to spam skill 2, and use the other skills on the main zerg. And that's it. The people guarding the turrets have to kill the mobs and fingers that spawn near the turrets. That's it. This fight is deemed as hard because it takes a lot of people, and therefore a lot of DPS. The whole encounter is simply a DPS race. And that's why I find it incredibly lame. It's so easy to fail the encounter because you have to rely on so many other people to do their jobs properly, even though these jobs, as I just described, are so very easy. People seem incapable of doing them without some sort of voice communications, which I find utterly bizarre. The fight itself is simple if you ask me, so the rewards for finishing such a boss are relatively okay. However, because so many people can't do it and complain about it, they see the rewards for it as being awful, and then they're less inclined to do it, and then just the whole situation snowballs. Diablo 3 also has this same problem. The game is made trivial by becoming a DPS race. The fact of the matter is, any boss and any enemy in any game can be made very easy by killing it quickly. This, to me, is artificial difficulty. Having to rely on other people is fine when in an organised environment, such as a raid. But when you're in an open world situation, random people can ruin these things very, very easily, fail the events, and disappear before you can even tell them what went wrong. Now some people like that kind of organic situation, but no one that finds to quattle difficult does, at least that I've spoken to, and I don't like it either because my skill can be undermined by any number of other useless players that you can't simply kick out. The most recent dungeon path in Guild Wars 2 also suffers from being labelled as too hard. It's not too hard, people just need to act accordingly in certain situations. A lot of the problems here come from communication issues. The final boss is incredibly hard to range, which is why if you melee him, he's very easy. It's also why the allied NPC in the room tells you to melee the boss. The electric floor room is another thing that people complain about. Oh, what a BS death, how are we supposed to avoid that? Again, the NPC tells you about the electricity and gives you a chance to get out of the way. There's a lot of situations where the solution to this so-called difficulty is to just pay attention. Be that pay attention to just mechanics, be able to react accordingly, or just simply being able to read the chat, because if someone's done this before, they're no doubt trying to tell other people how to successfully do it again. I think this dungeon has the correct amount of difficulty. 
It's not too hard, but it isn't completely face roll either. I feel like I've got my point across very poorly here in my ranting, but I really wanted to share my feelings towards people's complaining about these encounters. So after many, many deaths, here's my successful fight with Ornstein and Smo, using all the practice I had previously. Now I felt awesome about this win, however to Quattle did not make me feel good. When I beat to Quattle I felt relieved, and I also felt like I wanted to never do that boss again. Is that a bad thing? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a detriment to the gameplay. But we'll see what you guys think. Thanks for watching.